I know this video might not make everybody happy, but I don't really care, to be honest, because I'm done with this in gaming, and that is Games as a Service. It's gotten so bad with Games as a Service that there are actually people who think that Games as a Service is the only way to play games, that Games as a Service is the only thing that we need when it comes to gaming. All of these titles that come out and sit here and try to trick users into doing microtransactions nonstop and paying for certain things and FIFA Ultimate Teams and NBA 2K tokens or whatever else is happening. This stuff with the battle passes, all this nonsense that's going on with Games as a Service, it's just terrible. And it's been bad for a while and i've tried to try to get into these type of games and it ultimately just isn't working and not only is it not working is that it's actually ruining certain ips and certain things that all of us as gamers love and i'm gonna break down all of that you know in terms of everything that's happening and also why i'm thinking this on twitter i put out a post some of you guys might have saw it, when it comes to single player games and what's coming out and this games as a service stuff but it's terrible it's terrible and it's getting worse and worse with games as a service i've noticed a lack of creativity 100 percent the repetitive gameplay look at the recent suicide squad kill the justice league gameplay that came out i mean graphically it looked great but level wise and gameplay wise it looked like it was just some huge level or some huge world and then you're just running around killing the same enemies with guns with people who do melee attacks like it did not look like they really took the time to make the individuality with a ip like the suicide squad and instead said hey let's take a popular ip and adapt it to this model so we can make tons of money over the course of however long like it did not seem like they had intense passion for the characters individually to make the gameplay focused around that and it shows it shows and that's exactly why the game got delayed it got delayed because they're like okay hold up <laughs> there's other big games coming out in that area but also we need to polish up a few different things now it's still going to be a games as a service type of model but obviously something was an issue there because they paid a lot of money to probably be in that state of play and to have that release date and everything shown off right then and there only to delay it shortly after that doesn't make any sense right especially for your huge game these games aren't bringing hype anymore anytime you hear that games the service model anytime you see those arenas and you're just sitting there and shooting over and over and it's multiplayer focused to the extreme it just doesn't bring hype it brings more like oh here we go again also if you look at it remember when they showed off the gear icons and gear ratings that's also the death nail to me in multiplayer games when you start showing off oh here's the gear and it's level this and it has some type of flame sorcery around it but then you can get a different piece of gear that's like the same thing but that's level 17 or something like that it's just like where does this thing stop where does it stop at it gets tiring they just want you to buy gear and grind armor packs in the same arenas with the same missions over and over and over again with a lackluster story probably with most of these things and it's so funny because a lot of these games that come out recently right i think they're trying to prey upon us gamers and our nerdy tendencies we love dc we love marvel all of these characters and we're seeing it back to back to back we saw avengers for example and how that game was legitimately terrible i played the game and i had a sliver of fun for just a bit but it was legitimately terrible they have all of this money they have all of that time to make something and what they turn out is this stuff this is what they turn out and once again i played the game and i'm thinking to myself this is not how i'd want to play as captain america or this is not how i'd want to play as hulk this is just not it i was playing games back on the ps2 yes the ps2 and even before then that gave me a better euphoria of superhero gameplay than what they're coming out with now at this point and it's ridiculous this games as a service model is terrible it needs to die it needs to die and listen i get it people love games of the service you've got fortnite and all that and you've got destiny and you've got all sorts of games and i'm not saying those games should go away i'm not saying that people shouldn't have fun with those i'm not saying that those don't have a place in the industry however a lot of these copycats a lot of these people that are clearly looking i wouldn't say to make a quick buck but are looking to take advantage of this model without thinking things 
all the way throughout with a cohesive single player experience in addition to not being predatory with what they're doing with the monetization which is very hard to do but still you have to look at it that way i think they're not thinking all this through i think that they're not looking at it from that standpoint they're not building their games inside out they're starting from the outside and saying okay what can we do to make it more presentable so people don't get upset so they're not starting with a solid single player experience, solid mechanics within each individual character and kind of going from there then expanding to a multiplayer mode. They're just already starting at that games as a service mode. And I think that when you build games like that, it turns into something that is not good because even Fortnite wasn't built like that. Fortnite was not built like that at first. It was built as like the survival horde mode type of thing. First and foremost, we're like, hey, you just play with your friends from there. And then the whole other stuff kind of birthed after that, right? It wasn't the other way around. So I do feel that a lot of these companies are just doing it the wrong way. And even if you look at it right now, always online DRM. And I know some people say, well, we're always online. Well, no, we're not always online there's been rough weathers where i live at and there's been multiple times where my power's cut out or the internet's cut out or there's been issues here and there and i would love to just sit back and play a game one of the reasons why i love the nintendo switch if anything happens i can still grab my nintendo switch and play and even if i don't have power and my switch is low for whatever reason i can use my power bank or whatever the case is but most of the time it's all charged up and i can still play to kind of pass the time like always online drm it's not a good situation like if you want to go to somewhere else maybe the place that you're going to doesn't have internet or whatever you want to be able to play the games that you buy at any point and not have to worry about connecting online if the connection is not good or if you don't have internet or whatever the case is. So to me, these always online DRM type of situations that a lot of these games are pushing on us is just ridiculous. And it's like, no, I don't want to have always online DRM. I don't need to have it always hamstrung to my game. I mean, we saw it so many times with various games as well. There was that one game from Square Enix that I can't really remember the name of the shooting game, but it'll be up on the screen here for you guys that also did that and i remember playing it like okay well i'm done like i'm done I, I don't need this in my life but what prompted this rant more like from me is the fact that single player games the big single player games are coming at this point the games that we've been waiting years for are coming at this point so i don't really need these predatory games as a service type of titles when games like these that i'm going to talk about here are going to give me hours upon hours of gameplay some of them hundreds of hours of gameplay all of these live updates all these different services all that type of stuff is not needed now i want to make sure that i really separate the two though right because we do have games like splatoon and super smash brothers doom 2016 uncharted 4 games that are great because they built within the single player first and then kind of expanded out to do multiplayer awesome stuff so no hate against those games those games are doing their thing it's fantastic so i want to make sure that i just separate the two there no crazy login bonuses fortnite shenanigans against multiplayer gear ratings all that's not needed when it comes down to it but recently i talked about this on twitter how i'm kind of just done with these games as a service because you have a phenomenal game that in my opinion i just needed for my soul and for my ps5 resident evil 4 remake coming out on the ps5 xbox series as well ps4 it's coming to kind of everything except for switch and i played that chainsaw demo and it just brought a huge grin to my face a huge smile and the technicality and the fun and the redone level design like you can just see how passionate the developers are about that game resident evil 4 and about really making an experience that we've already played with characters that we know and somehow making it 10 times better and 10 times better than any multiplayer games as a service game which i've played all of them over the past decade or whatever they've been doing them i've played so many of the popular ones i've never felt a certain feeling that i had with that freaking resident evil 4 chainsaw demo it was incredible it was an incredible experience and feeling and i'm just thinking to myself we just don't need this we don't need these games as a service in order to have fun and in order to play games with our friends and certain things like that we don't need to take part of that and tell developers that yeah that's what we want no we don't need to do that at all at least 
I don't need to. I don't care what you guys do, but I don't need to do that anymore. So I'm looking at it from this type of way. Now, also, we have a game like The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom coming out very soon as well. It's going to be here in two months as of the time that I'm recording this video. About two months, it's going to be here. And goodness gracious, the hype could not even be bigger. We have PAX that's coming up. I think Nintendo's going to probably show off something, a brand new trailer there as we get towards April as well. So The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, that's going to give me probably legitimately like 300 to 400 hours of gameplay. I put 200 to 300 hours of gameplay into The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And this game, Nintendo actually talked about it recently. They talked about exploring Hyrule, right? And the whole world. And you saw the outlook of just the first game where it was just the whole Hyrule field and the castle and everything like that. But then with this one, you saw the same thing in terms of the ground, but it looked way more mass. Obviously the draw distance and everything has been improved greatly, plus the skies, right? Plus the skies and being able to transfer back and forth between the exploration and what they're going to do seems like it's going to be immaculate in this game. And of course the custom vehicles, all the cool things that people did on their own in Breath of the Wild that I was just like, oh my gosh, how'd you guys build that or how'd you guys do that? We're gonna have control with that. They're gonna give us tools in order to traverse Hyrule. And I think that the reason why is because Hyrule is gonna be so much bigger and there's gonna be so many more areas to go and you're gonna need to get there faster than what you did. Otherwise, it's gonna take ages just to get from one point to another. So I'm very excited about that. And of course, another massive game that's coming out this year, Final Fantasy 16. I know some people are maybe a little bit upset with the gameplay. I still think that it's an action RPG game that is something that I want to play. I want to play. It looks phenomenal. And it feels like to me that it's actually taking advantage of the current generation of systems with the PlayStation 5. Like, yes, we've gotten stuff like God of War Ragnarok. That's fantastic. It looks great. We've gotten Returnal. We've gotten Ratchet and Clank. But I feel like a lot of these games could have been done on PS4. A lot of them were on PS4 or could have been done on that. And that's no knock to Sony and their engineers and everything like that. I think the PS4 is a great system overall in terms of how it was designed and everything. But I feel that this game, this is the true RPG coming of age for the PlayStation 5. It's the true, okay, here we are in the current gen. It's taking advantage of it. They talked about how if you wanted to have this game look the way that it looked on PC, you'd need a $2,000 rig or something like that. So they're really taking advantage of the PS5, the APIs, the SSD, everything they need to do to make this game feel like the true big current action RPG game. So I'm excited for that. And I'm going to put a lot of time into that game. I'll probably 100%. I'll probably platinum it. It'll be my first time that I've platinumed a PlayStation game or even an Xbox game in a very long time. I'll probably platinum that game, which once again, I never do that. But it looks like it's something that I want to do everything in that game the way that it's laid out. So very excited for that. So with all of these huge single player games coming out that are going to be really good, that are going to review really well and that are going to be really good i have no need for all of these shenanigans when it comes to games as a service and these fraud tactics in order to get me to try to buy whatever they're doing their weapon multiplayer skin packs that are useless do nothing for you cosmetic packs and all this type of stuff that's ridiculous i don't need that when it comes down to a heck fire emblem engage gave me different weapon packs and all that different type of stuff or how your characters hold certain stupid weapons and all that and different whatever they gave me all that i can just play that there in a single player game i don't need to sit there and go into all of this when it comes to games as a service this stuff is a scam to me and i feel that even more developers are going to try to do stuff like that in order to get us to get into that you have blockchain gaming stuff like from square enix trying to get us into that coming out dr disrespect trying to get us into that nah you can take your disrespect and go home square enix and doctor please just go home because i'm not biting i'm not buying it i don't care I'm going to buy that stuff that I feel is the good stuff for myself when it comes to gaming. And it reminds me of the golden age when you went, got that game, put it into your system, played and enjoyed single player. And if there's a multiplayer component, cool, have fun, have at it. But that single player component was where it was at and where you can have fun or even co-op with your friends without all this other nonsense they're trying to shove down our throat here. So I'm done. I'm done. And I just want to let you guys know that I am when it comes down to it. So what do you guys think about this? Check out some of my other videos where I talked about what happened with Square Enix. 
I have part one and part two. Part one, people didn't like. Part two, people love. So those will be linked on the page right here, plus other videos that you can watch too. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it, and we'll see you for the next video. Peace.